Hi everybody, welcome to Vijasov Foundation. My name is Manoj Swaminathan and today I am going to show you various free pharmacovalence resources facilitated by the World Health Organization. I am sure you will be fascinated with the kind of resources that I am going to demonstrate today. Let's get started. So first and foremost, I want to show you this website which is www.whopvresources.org This is one of the foremost resource website uh, provided by the World Health Organization. If you look at this website, there is a section on frequently asked questions. Then you also have an appendix section. And uh, most importantly, you have the go to resources section. So we'll go to this website, this web page and here you can find various sections that include introduction, PV systems, setting up a PV center, WHO PIDM, data, signal detection, benefit risk assessment, communication in pharmacovigilance, crisis management and most importantly glossary. Okay, so we will now go through all these sections in detail. First, let us start with the introduction section. Here you can firstly find the harm related to the use of medicine. If you click on read more, you will get more information. And you can go through this section as well. Then you have an option to go through the pharmacovalence methods. You click on this, again you will get a lot of useful information. Apart from this, if you are confident, then you can even take the quiz. You click on this and some questions will open. So you can do that and there will be I think uh, one or two questions for every section. You can do that. The next section which I want to show you is the PV systems section. So here uh, it gives you information about the functions of a national pharmacovalence system and also the functions of uh, the various uh, sections. Then the minimal uh, requirements for a functional pharmacovalence system. It primarily talks about the national systems, but then again, it will be useful information. And once you feel confident, then you can even take the quiz. So there will be some questions and also with the multiple choice uh, answers and you can answer them. The third is setting up a pharmacovalence center. This is primarily for national centers, but then still pharmacovalence conceptually remains the same. So it will be useful for anyone. So you can get information on the basic steps in setting up a pharmacovalence center. You click on read more, then you will get all the uh, steps that are required. Then reporting of adverse reactions, you click on read more and you will get all the information about uh, reporting of adverse drug reactions and you can even download uh, certain forms. For example, here you have the spontaneous uh, adverse event reporting form. So you can do that. So it's a word format of the form. So you can do that. So apart from that, uh, you can also look at the various sources of adverse events that uh, you can get it through mobile apps, or uh, telephone calls, fax and other uh, things, other uh, sources. Then also the logistics involved in the organization of a pharmacovalence center. You click on read more, again you will get all the useful information out here. And there will be a lot of documents which you can download and they will all provide you very useful information. I will not click any of them now because it will take a lot of time. You can do it yourself. I'll be providing the links to all the relevant websites uh, in the section below. Then also you have a section on uh, financial issues in uh, pharmacovigilance. So again, it provides some information and also the some considerations about budget and other expenditure. And uh, you can click on these documents and uh, all useful free resources are available on this website. 
Apart from this, you also have some information on the WHO PIDM, that is the Program for International Drug uh, Monitoring. And it gives you information about the history of uh, WHO PIDM. Again, you also have an option to take the quiz, some questions and you will be able to answer them. Uh, then there is a section on data. Here again, you can download and you will be able to get some information. Again, uh, once you feel confident, you can take the quiz. You can click on this and you'll be able to take the quiz. Then you also have a section on signal detection, where it gives you information from the basics, that is, uh, what is the signal, the different signal uh, detection methods, then uh, the data mining of large safety databases, all this information. Uh, I'll just show you by clicking some things, where here you can get information about uh, signal, uh, the various steps in signal management, then uh, the methods of signal uh, identification. So all this very useful information. You can always click on read more and you'll get more information. Then also about the data mining of large safety databases. Uh, again, you can even see the references to get more information about uh, the signal uh, management tools. Then you have a section on benefit risk assessment. So again, a useful section and you also have a, an interesting video. You can click on it and you can view the video. You can do that as well. Then uh, there is an interesting section on communication in pharmacovigilance. Again, you can click on read more and you will be able to get more information. Okay. Then uh, why is communication important? Communication flowchart, the methods in communication. And finally, if you are confident, you can even take the quiz. So again, more useful. Uh, then there is a section on uh, crisis management where uh, it talks about the various crisis scenarios in pharmacovigilance and uh, how you should uh, manage them. Again, you can take the quiz as well. Uh, and then finally, you have the glossary section. So where you will get the definitions and uh, some additional information about uh, uh, pharmacovigilance. So in addition, you also have this link. You click on this link and you will generate a PDF uh, from the WHO with all the required abbreviations. So this was about the first resource, that is the WHO PV resources.org. Now I'll show you the next resource, which is on the WHO newsletters. So this is an interesting uh, document, which is published, I think, once every quarter. And uh, what you can do is you can go through this document or the newsletter and get more information. Uh, I have downloaded one for your information. Yeah. So this is the latest WHO pharmaceuticals newsletter where uh, you can get information about the regulatory matters, safety of medicine signals, and also there's a feature section. So if you go below, you can find information about the various signals identified by various regulatory agencies globally. So that's the advantage because WHO will call, uh, assimilate or uh, gather all the information and uh, publish in this single report. So very useful. It's an exhausting report and you will also get information about which agency has identified. For example, the first one here, it is Japan. Then if you go below, uh, here it is uh, United Kingdom. So that is obviously about uh, MHRA and so on. So you'll be able to generate all the required information. Then the other next resource I wanted to show you was with regards to training. So the first one I wanted to show you was about uh, iLearn, okay? So iLearn is again uh, an interesting initiative from the WHO. You can, uh, I'll be sharing the links with you uh, below. Uh, once you log in, you will be able to take this course. So this is primarily about AEFI causality assessment, which is an e-learning program, again, free of cost and a uh, lot of videos and very useful. I have myself taken this course. I think it's around two and a half hours and have generated a certificate as well. Uh, 
So if you look at this, there is a section my learning record. I'll just click on this and I'll show you. So I had taken this book. This was 3.5 hours. And uh, again, it is free of cost. So strongly recommended courses. Apart from this, uh, WHO also or the WHO UMC also has a separate portal for learning for the continued learning that the learning.who-umc.org so here you can find various courses in pharmacovigilance if you click on view catalog you will be able to uh, identify the various courses and these are courses available in English as well as Spanish uh, let's look at English and here you can find courses like introduction to pharmacovigilance drug induced liver injury essentials of pharmacovigilance collecting high quality adr reports then uh, causality assessment uh, then the two of sing single cases as well as case series then uh, signal detection and finally signal assessment and uh, statistical uh, reasons and algorithms in pharmacovigilance all these courses are available uh, and also you can generate certificates once you complete these courses i'll just log in and show you So it is possible that when you try to enroll, it will show that uh, uh, there is no uh, course seat available. So you can always join the waiting list and then you'll get an email that you have not got enrolled. Again, uh, this course is not for everyone, but then if you are a student or you represent any NGO, then it is definitely going to be useful. So these are the uh, courses which uh, I got enrolled and I also generated some certificates. So I'll just show you one of my certificates. Yeah. So this one I it took around two or three months ago. Yeah, it, it was on the 22nd of March. So you have the date as well, the number of hours and also the certificate of completion. Extremely valuable. Uh, these certificates are definitely going to be of some or the other use. So I think that is it about the various resources in pharmacovigilance offered by the WHO. Uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments or suggestions. Until then, all the best. Take care. Stay safe.